All right, folks. So um, we are going to talk about interview prep, specifically in this virtual landscape, right? So it's going to look a little bit different um, because we're not going to be having in-person interviews. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. For the students who are here, um, when you think about interviews, how do you feel about them generally. If you feel confident, feel free to use the clap emoji. Um, if you feel nervous, you can use the shocked or open mouth emoji. And then if it depends on what you're interviewing for or, or the day or more circumstances, you can use the little confetti slash party hat emoji. Awesome. Yeah, it definitely makes a lot of sense. You can have a lot of mixed emotions about interviewing. So before the interview, right, one of the biggest things that makes interviewing um, or what can make interviewing easier is your preparation, right? So when we're having Zoom, Zoom interviews or when we're having interviews um, via any video conferencing software, you wanna make sure that you're in a well-lit room. So you wanna be maybe in the sunniest part of your, um, your house or your apartment, maybe in the kitchen, possibly in your room if you also have like, um, if you have windows that are facing the light, you just wanna make sure that it's very clear and very easy to see where you are in the space. Um, make sure that your background is neutral, clean. It's okay if you have like a door in the background or just a blank wall. Um, in my circumstance, I'm using like a Zoom background. That's also okay. Just wanna make sure that it's a pretty um, professional Zoom background. Hopefully it's giving, um, I'm in a nice sunny part of my luxurious, <laughs> luxurious apartment. Um, but you want to make sure that you're by yourself, so no pets, no dogs, no cats, um, and let whoever you're home, you're home with know that you're also interviewing so that they can kind of be mindful of background noise, because we know that Zoom can kind of pick up what's going on around us, and you just want to make sure that when you're interviewing, your interviewer is listening to you and not whatever is playing around, around you. Um, so you want to make sure you rehearse your questions before you have your interviews. Um, and we can also provide you a list of questions, common interview questions to make that a little bit easier. But you also wanna make sure that you're dressed professionally, right? So top and bottom, even if you think you're gonna be sitting down for the entire Zoom or, or the entire um, interview, cause you never know when you might need to get up or when you might need to move. Um, and so instead of listing those things, uh, those uh, professional pieces, let me ask you this. In this scenario, top or bottom, who looks more interview ready? The folks at the very top of the screen or the folks at the very bottom? What are we thinking, top or bottom? And Agnes, I can't see the chat if you could. Sure, yeah, so, so far um, two students are saying the top. Okay, can anybody give me a reason as to why the top looks more professional than the bottom? What are they wearing? What additional pieces, maybe color schemes that are going on that can kind of give the illusion of a more professional, more put together sort of look. A couple others agreed um, that the top looks more professional, but yeah, that's a great um, question. What about the top um, photos make it more professional? Um, so usually monochromatic outfits are seen as more professional in workplace settings. Um, so long, like if they're not bright and flashy colors because um, more muted colors are preferred. Yeah, no, Emily, that's a great explanation for sure. Um, if you're wearing a monochromatic, I love the vocabulary. If you're wearing a monochromatic outfit or an outfit in which it's, you know, you don't have contra contrasting colors, it's a lot easier for the interviewer to focus on you and what you're saying, which you want to be the main focus of the interview. Of course, you want to look put together, look stylish, but you want the interviewer to be more focused on what's going on in the interview and be engaged in the conversation and not wondering you know, why you put so-and-so together, definitely. So a monochromatic or a more simpler outfit lets your own personality shine more. And Great. in the chat, um, some folks mentioned blazers and tailored jackets are professional. Um, their formal clothing and the colors also was mentioned again. Exactly, right on point. Blazers, tailored jackets definitely add a more professional element to your, to your fit, to your outfit. Um, before the interview, you want to make sure that your laptop is fully charged, right? Um, you want to also test out your device prior to using it. So see what you look like when you're speaking on camera. Um, what do you look like when you're looking into the camera versus when you're looking at the screen? Do you look just as engaged? Do you feel comfortable? Um, you also want to notice if you're lagging because that might affect how you uh, answer your questions, how quickly you, you answer your questions. 
Um, make sure you check your internet connection. You don't want to have to freeze or, or restart your computer during the interview interview if you don't have to. And so if you know that certain times your, inter your uh, internet connection tends to slow down, maybe consider um, rerouting some things, restarting the router. Um, just do whatever you can to make sure that while you're interviewing, things are going as smoothly as possible. And if you are not on your phone, meaning if you're not Zooming via your cell phone, you just want to make sure you turn it off so that it's not distracting you in the background with any pings or notifications. So prior to the beginning of the interview, you want to log on to the Zoom link or the video conferencing link and kind of just be prepared and ready for there. Um, you don't want to have your interviewer waiting on you. You don't want to um, have to restart the computer prior, or prior to right before you log on. You want to make sure that you're ready for the interview and that you feel comfortable so that when you start, you're not thinking about any other technology issues, okay? You also want to have your resume on hand. Um, ideally, if you can print it out, but if you can't print it out, um, feel free to just skim it right before the interview, a job description, and then questions to ask your interviewers. I'll pause right there just in case folks have any questions or any comments. Access we have a comment in the chat. Um, okay. And it's a great comment. So you really, the comment is you really just need one good interview outfit. Um, I had a monochromatic blazer dress that I'd wear with dark tights and simple flats. I keep them as clean and pressed as possible and made it easier than trying to pick something out beforehand. If you have a follow-up, maybe get a second blazer jacket. Also recommend dressing up fully and not wearing um, like a nice shirt with PJs, even though you're on Zoom. Yes. And then you have a question, um, what, what is a good question to ask your interviewer? We'll get to that. We'll get to the sec to the question. Um, but for the person that provided the interview out outfit tip, great point. If you have an outfit that you know you feel most comfortable in and you feel really present in, definitely always have that on on point or on ready for any time you do have interviews. Um, and making sure that you're fully fully. You feel like you're, even though you're not leaving your home, you're dressed as if you're leaving your home and that you're gonna be with this person face-to-face. -face. But I will get to the question about, the second question um, about what to ask the interviewers. So during the interview, like I said, um, look at the camera. If looking at the camera is a little weird, you can look just like right below it and it will still look as though you're making eye contact. Um, make sure you smile as you talk. You want to show that you're engaged and that you're happy to be there. And then also make sure that your voice is very loud and very clear. Um, and this is going to come with more practice. So if you feel uncomfortable answering questions or you kind of pause or you need to think, that's totally okay. And in our bodies, it feels like it takes longer than what it comes across as in an actual interview. But you just want to make sure that like what you're saying is coming across clear, is coming across confident. Um, and that you, you're coming and looking and feeling prepared for this interview. So you wanna answer questions with complete sentences, um, provide stories if possible, especially stories that tell you engaging with other folks um, and working with other folks to solve a problem. Refer to things on your resume, so experiences that you've had. A lot of you guys have really, really powerful and really interesting experiences, and so you wanna bring that up. And then also be comfortable with taking notes during the interview because employers might provide you with more information in the interview than what you came in with, with what you can kind of expect on the day to day. To answer um, the person's question about a good um, question you can ask during an interview, a simple one or a common one that I go to is, what does the day to day look like, right? Because that gives the interviewer a chance to kind of spell out for you from the time that you uh, sign on or from the time that you come in, what is expected of you? Who are the people you might be in contact with? What sort of projects or responsibilities can you expect to have? Um, and then how you can kind of plan around that. So a good question is, what can I expect to do on the day to day or what does an average day look like? Uh, so use, make sure you use the STAR method. So that's situation, task, action, and result. These are going to be for behavioral questions. So anytime someone or an interviewer asks you, um, tell me about a time that you solved a problem or solved a challenge, or tell me about a time in which you worked with a team, that's considered a be behavioral question because it's trying to frame you in some sort of context to see how you would address any conflicts that come up or any tasks that you need to attempt to complete. 
So when you hear these sort of questions, think of a specific example, right? So this is why it's also good to review your resume prior to the interview, because it can kind of get you into the mind frame of thinking about what you have done and the experiences you have had already. Think about the situation, explain the task that you had to complete, right? And then also give the action, the actual action that you were doing or the, the task that you had to do to complete that task and then provide the result, right? So if you're talking about a um, class presentation in which you had to work with a team, the situation is that you were assigned the class presentation, the task is that you needed to complete it, um, your actions were maybe that you created the Google Slides or maybe you coordinated the times that you and your team would come together um, and you were the person that proofread it. And then the result was that you guys all passed um, the, the presentation or you got an A or maybe you learned that this is the type of leader that you are, right? So it provides a scenario for the interviewer to learn a little bit more about you than they would just looking at your resume. Does that make sense? When like when you're asked um, those type of questions, is it okay to take a few like seconds to think about it or? Yeah, for sure. So the seconds to you may feel like a really long time, but if it just takes you two or three seconds to kind of organize your thoughts, that's totally okay. And then it allows you while you're speaking to to kind of flow more um, fluently as you're talking. So you'll feel more confident, you'll come across as more confident. So yes, if you need to pause for a couple of seconds, that's totally okay. We have a question in the chat. What's a good way to take notes kind of incognito during the interview? Um, so if you have your, your laptop in front of you, right, or maybe you're on your phone, I would say have your uh, notebook or the piece of paper that you are going to write on right to the, to the right of you or to the left of you, depending on the hand that you used to write, and just kind of quickly jot down like a shorthand or short notes. You don't want to jot down um, exactly what they're saying, but just like something that's going to help you remember or reframe what they mentioned. So there's no way to fully in <laughs> incognito um, write without the interviewer noticing, but there's a way to do it so that it's not as distracting to them. And, you know, and they're going to be used to people jotting down, taking notes. They should Feel comfortable with that as well so don't feel like it's awkward if you take a second to jot something down or comment we have a comment another tip to prep right before if you're nervous um, if you can find a spot to be alone do some power poses and stretches to get the blood flowing to your brain and get some good brain chemicals going and then there was like a youtube link added so yeah thank you for that comment yeah no that's awesome power poses are great do whatever you need to to get you yourself into the mind frame to know that you a deserve the interview and so there's a reason why you're speaking with them they think you're great already and b so that you can feel like you can nail it um so during the interview prepare be prepared to switch to a phone call if for some reason zoom is being uncooperative or you're not able to connect with that person for whatever reason um, and if a connection breaks, you can use these go-to phrases like, sorry, I got cut off for a moment, or would you mind repeating that phrase? Sometimes when we're in Zooms, like the connections can kind of cross a little bit. And so someone may say something and then it sounds a little warped at the end. Don't be afraid to ask that person to repeat what they're saying. Um, ask one to two questions at the end and ask when you may, can, well, when you can expect to hear back from them. So one of the questions, like I mentioned before, can be, what does the day-to-day -day, or what does an average day look like at this job? And then you can also ask, um, what is it, you can say, you can ask them what is expected of me? You know, what, what sort of skills are you, are you looking for folks to bring into this space to get a better idea of how that matches up with what you already have and then what you can ideally um, grow as well. And so at the end uh, or at the conclusion of the interview, um, make sure that the call has ended. Sometimes Zoom or, or video conferencing can lag a little bit. Send an interviewer a thank you email within 24 to 48 hours, right? Because your name and your, and your interview is going to be fresh on their minds. And interviewers love thank you letters or thank you emails. Um, it's really considerate and it's something that honestly doesn't happen as often. So it's a way for you to stand out. Um, make sure you're checking your email every day to see if you got an offer, um, check your spam, check your inbox. Sometimes inboxes are divvied up into different to specific categories. Check all of those to see if you've been reached out to. Check your voicemail, please. 
check your voicemail because sometimes folks will follow up via phone call and you maybe might not uh, pick up the phone. Um, and so voicemails where they'll, they'll kind of provide you the follow up information. And then if an employer reaches out, just make sure you, res you respond as soon as possible, but ideally, excuse me, in 24 hours, okay? And if you're unsure of what exactly to say or how to respond to an employer, reach out to your career specialist. They're more than happy to help you kind of reframe or phrase what you want to answer, what you want to um, respond to the employer with. And they can also kind of help you um, frame any questions that you might have about the internship before you accept, okay? And with that being said, are there any questions, any last minute questions? And if you can't think of any questions um, or if questions pop up later on, you can always reach out to your career specialist. So I don't know if there's any um, Brighton students, but I'm your career specialist. Uh, Priscilla is for BGA and Mary Lyons. And we can provide a list as needed if you need to, if you're not really sure what your career specialist email is or you're not sure how to get in contact with them. Um, we have a question. What are common interview questions? Okay, so I can um, provide a list um, of interview questions, but uh, common ones are tell me about yourself. Um, tell me about a time in which you had to work with a team to solve a problem. What would you say your greatest strength is? What would you say your greatest weakness is? Why did you apply to this internship? Or what are you hoping to get from this internship or job? Um, and a question that they often ask at the end is, do you have any questions for me or any questions about this internship process or the interview process? Um, and that's where you can kind of jump, jump in and ask, what does the day-to-day -day look like? Or what can I expect um, to learn at this internship? Or who will I be working with closely um, during my time here? But I'd be happy to share a list of more specific questions. Next question, how would you go about some of the harder questions like tell me about yourself, tell me about your strengths and weaknesses? Awesome. So tell me about yourself is a pretty common question and definitely one of the most common questions to get stumped on. So I would start with your name, your age, the school that you attend, um, what you do outside of school, and then also what you do in school that interests you. So you can say, my name is Amanda, I'm 16 years old. I go to Boston Green Academy. Um, I'm on the soccer team and I'm also on the debate team. I'm really interested in uh, biology. I actually hope to grow, to grow up to be a doctor. Um, and the reason why I applied to this hospital internship is because I hope to get more experience about the medical profession and maybe connect with some folks who could help me along the way. Boom. So we know where her name is. We know her, um, her age, where she goes to school and a little bit about what interests her and what brings her to the interview. Another question, how do you know if the person who did the interview is interested in you? In you? I think the first or the easiest way for you to notice if the interview is going well or if the person is engaged is if the interview feels less uh, like question, like answer and response or question and response, excuse me, and it starts feeling more like a conversation, okay? So if the person is saying, can you tell me more about this or can you tell me more about, um, can you tell me more about your experience at the Boys and Girls Club? And then you start talking about the Boys and Girls Club and then it smoothly transitions into how you worked with a team or how you solved the problem. When it starts feeling more of like a equal back and forth, I think that's, that's a good tell or a good sign that your interviewer thinks that you're pretty amazing and, and wants the conversation to keep going. And to add to that, I think body language is mm -hmm. really helpful. Um, so if you bring in a good vibe, um, they're going to receive that and hopefully return that to you. So if you're smiling um, or if you're just good energy, like you show enthusiasm that you want to be there, it's likely that that will come through in the first you know, couple minutes and you'll have a good first impression um, that you're conveying and that they um, will hopefully um, make a good impression on you too um, about their, them and the company. Um, so that's something to think about is body language. For sure. Good point, Agnes. Body language is definitely important to pay attention to. So we have a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. We just did a session 
I'm formulating the question, tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. But what advice would you give to our students about prepping for that question? So I think the one of the most important things to think about when it comes to that question is to be honest, but also frame your weakness or your area of growth as a strength as well. So sometimes folks will say, my uh, weakness is that I'm a perfectionist and I want to get things done so well that I sometimes get caught up and can't uh, finish my task, right? That may be true if, if, that's, if that's really something that's a weakness of yours, right? And so you might say, um, my weakness is that sometimes I'm very detail or too detail oriented and can get lost in the details. And so what I like to do to keep myself on task is just remind myself of what the bigger project is and what my deadlines are as a, as a way to kind of see what the, what the bigger picture is. But I would say, for example, a lot of people struggle with time management. You can say, I struggle sometimes with staying on task or managing my time effectively. This, these are the things that I do to uh, mitigate that. So maybe I use my Google Calendar. Maybe I use a planner. Maybe I put timers on my cell phone just to make sure that like every 30 minutes I'm completing a task, right? So you want to be honest about what the weakness is and then also provide on the other side what you're using to help mitigate some of that weakness. But first things first, just be honest. Well, if there are no other questions, we thank you for having us. And we actually, we have another question. What's the best way to make eye contact over Zoom? So I would say, so you can look directly into the camera. I also would say you can look directly like right below it. And if the person is looking into the camera, it will look like you guys are both making eye contact. Um, try, I think sometimes the, the, uh, natural thing to do is to kind of look at the screen and kind of watch yourself as you're talking, but you can notice when someone's not looking at the camera versus when they're looking at the screen. So just keep, just be mindful of that. If you're looking down, sometimes to kind of check your body language, just make sure you always go back up and look at the camera, look at the camera or look right below the camera. Same thing with in person. If you're making eye contact, you can look directly at them, like in the eyes, of course, but then you can also look right at like the bridge of the nose and that will make the illusion that you're also giving eye contact. So for any folks who are kind of nervous about that part. Um, we do mock interviews. So your career specialist can do a practice interview with you. Um, so just feel free to reach out to them and um, we're happy to help you in, every, in any way um, to prepare for those coming up. Um, it's definitely, um, connect with them, start to work on the pick application, um, and just stay in touch with us. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I hope folks feel a little bit more comfortable going into this interview season for the summer, whether you work with PIC or with another um, organization. But like always, feel free to reach out to your career specialist um, if you have any questions or if you simply just want to practice. We're more than happy to sit down and, and run through some questions with you guys. So. I hope this was helpful and engaging um, and I'm happy to come back as needed for sure.